Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the U.S. Super Yacht Association Cocktail Happy Hour. My name is Kitty McGowan. I'm the president of the U.S. Super Yacht Association. And for the next 50 minutes or so, I'm going to be your host for what will be our virtual happy hour and speed dating evening. Um, so I'm very excited to be here with you all today. And we have some special guests. Of course, our vice chairman of the U.S. Super Yacht Association and head of our educational committee, Diane Byrne, who I'm very excited to have with us here today. Um, our cocktail guru himself, Jonathan Pogash, who I'm so jealous I'm having serious camera envy, Jonathan. I'm going to have to work on that and uh, having two cameras. Look at that. And his ants never left his body. And our, our super sweet chocolate man, Robert Bowden, who we're not doing a sweet this week, but next time for sure. Um, and of course, Mr. Yeti, uh, Mr. S. Yeti, um, who is here as well. But before we get started, I also want to thank and recognize Robert Perry, who has been uh, working with the U.S. Super Yet Association for the last year or so. He is the nephew of one of our board members, Julie Perry, who was going to be heading up our education <laughs> programs, who just graduated from college last week and also had a birthday. So I wanted to, to recognize Robert and thank him for everything. And his, his birthday present was unfortunately a speeding ticket. So, um, so sorry, Robert, but we want to say thank you. And he's recording today's presentation that will be available on ussuperyacht.com as well as our YouTube channel um, on the U.S. Super Yacht Association as well. So before we get going, I hope that you are all well, safe, turning to work, hopefully, dealing with COVID, and then we have this other crazy. So I hope that you guys can take a moment with me to recognize, and let's have a moment of silence and pray for peace, tolerance, and love in this world for everything that's happening, not just here in the United States or Minneapolis, but around the world. And let's have a moment of, of silent reflection for George Floyd and think about his family and friends that are missing him today. And let's pray for peace for just one moment, if you don't mind. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's not nearly enough to recognize everything that's happening, but I hope that the rest of us in the industry will recognize the importance of all of us working together to have a happy, united, and functioning world. So with that, we're going to hopefully have a little bit of fun and make some fun stuff. And when I heard that our cocktail guru was going to make a jam, uh, a jam cocktail, I said, I got to have to tie in with the same thing. So let me do this and let me turn it right over to our cocktail guru, Jonathan Pogash. You need to unmute Jonathan. Hang on. One second. Don't you just love Zoom is, I don't know about you, but I am like completely Zoom weary. Yet at the same time, we are. Really? Can you unmute the other I camera, please? I am unmuting him right now. Unmuted. Nope. Um, hang on. Sorry, guys. Jonathan Pogash. Unmute. 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 Hang on. We're unmute. Hang on. Unmute. Maybe it's the two cameras. I can't. Yep, you got it. You got it. You there? Yep, I'm here. Can you hear me? Hey! Okay. Was, I, I usually I mute the laptop and I unmute the um the phone so that I can oh. use the audio from the phone. Okay, so hi everyone. Thank you, Kitty. Uh, thank you, USSA. It's a great honor and pleasure to be here again to make a cocktail with you. And I don't know if you all have ingredients that were sent ahead of time or not. If you're following along, if you're not, that's okay. If you're not, but if you are, awesome. Um, so I'm, I'm really big into using things that we already have at home because we're definitely not out as much as we are. Um, and I tend to have a lot of jelly and jam. So this cocktail utilizes any kind of jam that you have at home. You can use uh, raspberry, strawberry, um, orange, marmalade, whatever you have. And uh, in combination with a margarita, um, one of my favorite cocktails. So for those of you who don't know, my company is The Cocktail Guru. 
right over here. And specific to the yachting industry, we do crew trainings for stews in um, certified courses, wine studies, and bartending and mixology. So we've actually been able to pivot and we offer them virtually now as well as when we're able to in person. Um, so that's what we do. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and interrupt real quick. And while you're here in South Florida, anybody who's looking for any of their ingredients, make sure you go to our sponsor, Crown Wine and Spirits. There's multiple locations in Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties uh, that you can be found on our website or right on our event page right now. So all the ingredients that you need for the cocktail guru, maybe not the jam, but, but everything else will be right there for you. Sorry, Jonathan. Uh, awesome. I wouldn't be surprised if they had jam as well. I wouldn't they, either. They, they, <laughs> They're they the had best. a lot of those nice, those cool specialty ingredients, cheeses and whatnot. Um, okay, so here we go. So I have my Boston shaker right over here, folks. It's the mixing glass and the mixing tin. This is what we're going to use to build our cocktail. So first of all, we'll take our tequila or mezcal. I have uh, mezcal over here. I just love mezcal. It's actually made from the same plant as tequila. It's made from the agave plant. Um, but there are hundreds of varieties of agave plants and mezcal uses a whole slew of different types of agaves. Plus it's cooked, the agave plants, they look like these big balls, kind of big giant uh, pineapples. They're cooked underground, um, just like a pig roast. So that's where you get the smoky flavor of the mezcal. It's like um, licking a cigar, kind of. That's uh, the, the, some of the flavor profile, the official flavor profile notes of mezcal, licking a cigar. Um, but I digress. Let's take our mezcal and do one and a half ounces into our mixing glass. And I'm using a jigger here, you'll notice. I'm just measuring my ingredients, one and a half ounces. And we'll cap that up. And now we'll use our triple sec, which is an orange liqueur. I have Cointreau, that is probably the most well-known triple sec out there. And I will use three quarters of an ounce of my Cointreau directly into my mixing glass. Okay, there we go. Love it. Now we need to add our jam. So I have this uh, raspberry jam right over here. Um, one of my favorites. We'll do a nice heaping spoonful, uh, just like that. A heaping teaspoon of raspberry jam directly into the mixing glass. Okay. It, it already has a really beautiful color. And to just add a touch more sweetness, there's some sweetness in the in the jam, but just a little bit more, I have some honey syrup, which is very easy to make at home. It's a great alternative to like a simple syrup, which is sugar and water. Honey syrup is just equal parts honey and warm water dissolved, okay? Honey syrup or honey water, oftentimes people call it. Let's do a half of an ounce of the honey syrup into our mixing glass. And now, in order to balance out some of the sweetness, we use fresh juice, right? Fresh lime juice. Obviously, nothing better than using fresh juices in our cocktails. Let's use three quarters of an ounce of fresh lime juice directly. Mm. Now, we will add ice and shake. So, let's add ice to our mixing glass. Plenty of ice. You can fill up your mixing glass pretty much all the way to the top with ice. There we go. Now we shake. And folks, keep this in mind. Shake it awake. Don't rock it to sleep. Okay. And we shake for a good eight Mississippis. So you all can count along with me if that's okay. All the way up to eight Mississippi. And look at my shaker face. Okay. While, while we do it. Okay. Let's go. Eight Mississippis. Ready, set, go. One Mississippi. Mississippi. Three, Mississippi. Four, Mississippi. Five, five, Mississippi. Six, Mississippi. Seven, Mississippi. Eight, Mississippi. Eight, Mississippi. Nice. So now we will separate our shaker, and you can either serve this on the rocks or uh, as a martini in a martini glass. I have my martini glass. We're going to rim the glass with a little bit of salt because I like a touch of salt. And here's here's a little interesting technique. So I take a lime. And all I'm gonna do is moisten the outside half, the outside half. You'll notice when you go into bars and restaurants, oftentimes they'll have the little dipper thing. They'll dip it in the roses lime juice and then dip it in the salt. I hate that. Number one, I hate roses lime juice because it's mm -hmm. artificial and gross. Mm -hmm. And then number two, when they dip it in, you get salt inside the glass and inside your drink and it affects your drink. Plus there's salt all the way around the rim. I only do the outside half so that the salt doesn't get inside 
and I have the choice of whether I want salt or no salt. So here's my salt and we do just half the rim, just like that, okay? And we'll strain it directly into our glass, okay? Really nice, beautiful pink color. Look at that. And garnish is very important in cocktails because after all, we taste with what first? We taste with our eyes first. Exactly, Kitty, yes, everyone. And I just take that lime and just float it right on top, just like that. And that is a jamarita. Jamarita. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm gonna take a sip and I'll let you guys know how it is, okay? <laughs> so is there, is it always, um, I, when I always think of mezcal, I always think of the worm. Does every mezcal have a worm or not? So, so the worm is a gimmick for tourists. So you go to, if you go to um, Oaxaca, where mezcal is produced, you'll go to the little side stores, little um, bodegas, and you'll, ha you'll see rows and rows of mezcals with worms in them and with scorpions in them. And it's for the tourists. It's for the uh, European and American tourists. Oh and it actually, uh, you could tell that the mezcal is probably not the best quality if it has a worm in it. <laughs> Actually, no, well, the they, they didn't tell me that when I was in college because it was kind yeah. of like a rite of passage to like do it and eat the, and eat the worm or swallow the worm. 21st birthday. That, uh, <laughs> now, that worm, by the way, is um, that is the invasive worm species that will invade some agave plants. So, when Ooh. they go out into the fields and they chop down the agaves, they'll slice them open, and sometimes you see the worms in there and they have to get rid of the whole agave, but they'll keep the worm. But it's interesting because you also go to the shops and you get the worm salt, which I actually like. I like using the worm salt. They dehydrate the worm and they crumple it up and mix it with salt. Well, yeah, that's kind of creepy, but uh, okay. that is like, to me, anything with a margarita just is just as happy bill. And now the agave, it, it, is it like um, champagne with agave and calling tequila. Talk, tell me a little bit about the, that, how that works in Mexico. Yeah, so it's, um, you know, as we'd say, a denomination of origin. So uh, to be called tequila, it has to be from the designated tequila region. Um, and the main city of the tequila region is Guadalajara. But the regions are expanding, you know, very quickly. Um, same with Mezcal. It has to be from the Oaxaca region of Mexico. Um, That's so on yeah, the western coast of Mexico. Yes, exactly. Now, is it like? Is it because I'm I'm just kind of starting my and the guys at Crown will understand this. I've just kind of been temp, just starting to tip my toes this college back into tequila. Um, does the different origins do they taste different based on the soils and the different things as well? Or how yes. Does Yes, they do. Not only on the, well, not only the soils, but also elevation. So, you know, you have quite dramatic steep hills and, and ravines and mountains. So those agaves that are grown at the very top of the hill get more direct sunlight. Those that are grown in the valleys get a little bit cooler um, temperatures, um, less heat. So yes, you have quite a bit of, you've got some variances in flavor. So that would be a lot like the pinots and the different things that are grown in in Willamette Valley or or, sure, yeah. or that were in Sonoma. They all have different flavors, not just but also from temperature. Well, that's absolutely a, yeah. Well, that's wonderful. And for those of you that don't know, Jonathan, are you still doing your daily Facebook live? So I, I used to do them daily. Now I'm doing them Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, okay. And I might, I might cut that back to two days and then one day, you know, as people are getting back to work, I'm also getting a little bit busier. Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, right now it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern live on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, and you can find so, you where on Facebook? Um, tell us exactly where. How do we find you? Right. So it's, uh, it's the Cocktail Guru page. So if you go and you search the Cocktail Guru page, uh, you can click like or follow. And then also on YouTube, my new fledgling YouTube channel. Please definitely go awesome. and subscribe um, to the YouTube channel. And that is also uh, The Cocktail Guru. Well, that's fantastic. And as always, Jonathan, it's, it's such a tremendous pleasure to have you. And we definitely will be chatting offline. 
because I got to know about your two camera thing and we'll <laughs> definitely finding out so I cannot have such camera envy. Sorry, I forgot to turn my phone off. Uh, but thank you as always for coming and being a guest and, and uh, showing us your jam cocktail. We will put the, uh, we have the ingredients on board on our website right now and we can also send that out. As well. So awesome. look forward to doing this again real soon and hopefully not good that we're doing the boat show in in Fort Lauderdale. We'll have Jonathan back for you there as well. But I know we'll see you before then for sure. And thank you again so much for joining us. You don't have to run, but uh, but I just know that you are a busy guy. So, um, but I was inspired by Jonathan's jam cocktail. And so when I was a kid. And that was a very long time ago because I recently had a birthday and you're putting me way closer to a different decade than I'd like to be at this point. But um, when we were kids, um, you know, everybody would get together, the whole neighborhood would get together and everybody would bring a dish of some sort. And, you know, it was either Swedish meatballs or whatever, but there was this one dish that, that my, my mom used to make and uh, it was essentially two ingredients, and she never used the third ingredient that I'm adding, it was meatballs. And then back then it wasn't so easy to find a bag of frozen meatballs. So she would have to make the meatballs. So I bought a bag of frozen meatballs. And of course, being from, from where we were, where I'm from, it had to be Heinz chili sauce. No other chili sauce has got to be Heinz. And uh, normally it would be uh, a different kind of grape jelly, but who could find jelly these days it's hard, it's like, it's kind of like toilet paper in some places. So we found some great jelly, the smuckers, but uh, normally I found some great jam and it was Welch's. Welch's grape jelly is usually the go-to, but we found some smuck smuckers grape jelly and it's quite very good. And now how I've kind of tweaked my mom's recipe is added a little cayenne pepper to it because who doesn't like a little hot with the sweet? To me, otherwise sweet just gets just too sweet. So what we've done is we've got a two pound bag of frozen meatballs and this is where it's so simple and this is where you can do it for a party, you can do it for, um, for an event or anything like that. You can just throw it in the, in the slow cooker. I have a slow cooker that's been sitting over here. I have two pounds of frozen meatballs that are in there. I have a cup and a half of the Heinz chili sauce which happens to be just the entire perfect bottle of Heinz chili sauce and three quarters of a cup of grape jelly. So it's a little bit of that. Now I've taken them and now I don't have Rob, I don't have Jonathan's fancy camera angles, but I've taken all the, just those two ingredients and I put them together and I, to me it's easier. You know, you can, if you really wanted to and just dump everything into the slow cooker, you could do that too. Now, if you don't like grape, cause some people don't like grape cause they remember grape uh, cough syrup or they hate the taste of grape. You could just like what he was saying with his jam cocktail, you could do apricot, you could do peach, you could do cranberry sauce um, and make it, make it a very seasonal thing. And so I, I really liked grapes. So you just melt them all together and you cook them on the stove and then just get them all together. And then you pour them over your frozen meatballs and you can either, you know, if you wanted to, you could defrost the meatballs the night before if you wanted to make this a real quickie thing and then just put them in the hot, in the sauce and heat them through in 20 minutes and serve them. It's a very simple thing. Um, and then you have them already in your little dish. You put them in a little dish, you put some, some toothpicks out there and it's like a little frill pick and it's super simple, super easy. And it's a great, it's a very unusual taste. And you think grape jelly and chili sauce, ew but it actually really works. <laughs> it's bizarre. I had, forgotten, I had forgotten how good it could be. And I was like, oh my goodness, well, I, I haven't had this in forever. And when I decided to do this recipe, I thought, what if I hate it? Then I'm gonna be stuck with mountains of these meatballs. <laughs> so now we have them and they're actually very good. So it's a lot of fun and it's a very easy thing to uh, shake up your next, uh, your next cocktail party. And for, the, for those, if you have people at your cocktail party that are above the age of, of 35 or 40, they actually might remember their parents doing those things. And it will bring back some really fun, very fun memories. And it's cheap and easy, and it's a fun way to kick things up 
and make yourself look like a rock star. So um, very simple. So thank you so much for letting me do that. So before we do the um, our our interviews with the Yeti, I just want to introduce. So I just saw who just joined us of uh, our chair of the U.S. Super Yacht Association, Kate Pearson. And, and as she texted me earlier, she goes, we're still working out here in California because she's in San Diego. And I'm like, well, we're working here too. We just happen to have a cocktail. <laughs> um, but uh, Kate, tell us what's happening out there in San Diego. Hi, everyone. It's so nice to see all of these lovely faces. I wish I could have a cocktail with you. Um, you know, things are settled into a weird new normal. Um, as it relates to working from home and, and trying to get everything done. Um, it, it's, it's, it's just a really different time right now. Um, you know, with the, the protests have been really wonderful and peaceful here in San Diego and really effective. Um, but it's sort of trying to forecast as to where we're all going to end up in a few months. That's where I'm looking right now. I'm, I'm, I'm the vice chair of the California Marine Recreation Association, and we were on a board call today talking about our event, big event in September. And I, we just have no clarity into whether we'll be able to gather in September. Um, and then, you know, we have all of our upcoming events that we need to get a handle on too. So it's trying to forecast without having a crystal ball, guys. That is, that is... <laughs> That's the, the, yeah, it's more like the, the yeah, left right side. now. <laughs> In fact, I believe we've got one of those. Hang on, I'm gonna get it. <laughs> Our crystal ball has turned officially into mud because nobody knows anything. And just when you think you know something, it's changed. So it is indeed the lucky eight Whoa! ball. Oh, okay. So what does the magic eight ball say about the? the What's that topic? Well, our topic is, let's say, the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show. Oh, be good, guys. It's a, uh, well, um, <laughs> it's declining to comment at this time. <laughs> Too funny. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, is exactly what it says. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, <laughs> It's, that's like my official, what I call the official decision maker. I don't know if you can see this. It's like a very fancy schmancy version. It does the same thing. It has go home as one of the answers. That's usually what I get. So that tells me that there is no answer. Just forget asking. There is no answer. But there are some very good things happening. And that is like, I want to do a quick update um, from, from the standpoint of the boating industry. Uh, Florida, with the exception of Dave Broward of Palm Beach County, is about to go into phase two of opening, which means that the bars and movie theaters will soon be open in our state. Um, of course, Dave Broward and Palm Beach County are, we're like, the, been like the center of our, of our state. Um, Rhode Island has officially opened this week to yeah. have transient traffic in Rhode Island without a 14-day um, a stop there in, uh, in Hideaway. So that's really good news. Um, the International Yacht Brokers Association had a meeting today, uh, had an actual char little small charter show, but they had about 15 boats. So we're seeing some really positive signs that the industry is starting to resurge very quickly because people really do want to get back to life and want to get back to things. And as the the Northeast opens up. Maine still seems to be a little bit of a sticking point. We're hoping later in the, in like maybe mid-July, where they're getting a lot of pressure. Um, the Bahamas are about to open here very soon in a phased, in a phased way. Um, there's a, uh, even though most of the, a lot of the shows are, are closing, there's a new show that's happening in Connecticut that's going to be, that's already been approved and in and the governor is blessed it, the police have, invest, have blessed it, and it's going to be a really nice way to kind of kick off a show season and be able to get people engaged back in doing shows again. We're still waiting on to hear about some of the September shows with the Monaco Yacht Show, which where you're saying the million-dollar question, 
is whether what a uh, nonprofit Monaco yacht show looks like at this point. But at this point, U.S. Super Yacht Association is still planning our pavilions, and I know we say that planning our pavilions three times fast at the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show and at the Mets Trade Show that they've just released some, some data that they're going to go forward in a new revised way to involve social distancing. So we're hopeful and fingers crossed that those things will be able to happen in a very positive way. Um, so yes, yeah, so here at the U.S. Super Yacht Association, we've been hard at work in trying to make sure that our industry stays not only relevant, but at the forefront. Um, the Outdoor Act has been working. The, there's a new uh, bill that's just passed the House and we're waiting Senate uh, passage from, uh, I think everybody's heard of the PPP, the, pay, the Paycheck Protection Program, and now they're talking about the PPFA, which is the Flexible Act to be able to expand the eight weeks and to be able to expand some things. So um, we've been, as, as the association, we've been working nearly daily with associations across the country to try and make sure that our industry stays functional and able to be able to meet the needs of our people and be able to have fun and make money and let's get back to work and just enjoy our business because God bless, we are very blessed to be in a really fun industry. So with that, speaking of fun, um, I want to say that I'm, I'm very excited to have our friend, and where did he go? He just, oh, there he is. Um, <laughs> Eddie, uh, that, uh, so now we have some people that are dropping off. So it's, um, so I know, I know that all of us are like, I don't know, because like, I clearly by the fact that we have a very few people on this call, that everybody has Zoom fatigue out there. So um, before we everybody i just want to say that we are continuing our educational series on thursday mornings at 11 o'clock and next thursday we are going to be talking about um, we have julie perry one of our board members who is one of the principals at an organization called boardable and working on um linkedin and the power of linkedin and how to harness that the energy that you can get for both personal and business through LinkedIn. With nearly 40 million people out of work at this point, I think the power of LinkedIn is more important now than ever. So I think that uh, that will be something to look forward to and you can find all that information on our website at ussuperyacht.com. The links for all of those, uh, those webinars and things will be on there as well. So um, in the meantime, uh, we're here to kind of like chat a little, um, since it was a speed dating thing and there's only now a few of us, um, let's, uh, let's just kind of like chat. I mean, because there's, and to me, I think everybody should, first of all, except for Kate, sorry, since it's midday, although it is afternoon and they say rosé all day. So if you want to, you want to take a quick cocktail and, uh, yeah. my, my dear friend, my sweet chocolate man. Robert Bowden, I didn't want to. I didn't want to impose on you this time because I, unfortunately, Robert just had suffered a major loss in his family with the loss of his mom, and and uh, we our heart goes out to you, and we'll bring you in the next time, and we'll have you make a sweet confection for all of us to make it make our days a little bit sweeter. So please, everybody, take a quick toast, and our hearts and thoughts to everybody. Cheers. So, Julie, <laughs> let's start with you, Julie. Yeah. Berry. Not oh, Julie great. Perry. Julie do Perry's that. doing our. I know. I start with you. <laughs> um, first of all, Julie Berry is uh, running for the board of directors for our, one of our partner organizations, the Marine Industries Association of South Florida, um, and it would be a great asset to that. Um, but Julie, tell, talk to us about your sector of the industry, please. You and let's talk to Mr. Yeti because Mr. S. Yeti is doesn't know anything about our industry. And if you are talking to a stranger on the street, because keep in mind, this, this is being recorded and we actually have had quite a few people go back and review some of the tapes of our, of our presentations. So talk to Mr. Mr. S. Yeti and say, uh, talk about your sector of the industry and what's happening and, and what maybe you could be looking at as how things have changed. And since we don't have a 15 second constraint right now, take a, take a 
Dr. Simon, let, let 25 us or 30, what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's counting now? Just take a minute or so and let's, let's hear about your sector because it's a very important part of how we operate in our industry. Well, I see that, uh, and actually I sold um, Mr. Yeti a boat yard for like 50 million, I think it was, right? <coughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. And uh, <laughs> anyway, um, what I see is that the, um, the one thing that I saw about this whole thing that went on, there, was, there were good things and bad things. You know, the good, things is, the good thing is that a lot of people came together and talked more. You know, they had more time to communicate. Um, I, I was able to get personal with, with more people, which was really nice. Um, the marine industry, from my standpoint, which are, you know, I'm not into yachting and all that, that area. I'm into the selling of the boatyards and marinas. What I saw was they actually didn't do so poorly because the boats had to stay here they couldn't go anywhere everybody was stuck so they had to have doctors you know and it's it's a good news bad news type of situation now a lot of the repairs um some of the repairs were suspended you know some continued some were su suspended um just at the yeah. beginning but not now right i mean now that's all relaxed now i mean so now to a degree, but you know, a lot of them had to close up or limit the amount of people that came in. They had to limit the work that they did, but they still had to carry people with the PPP. You have to still carry everybody, which is again, good news, bad news, um, mostly good news. And uh, that's the purpose of it. But, but at least they had the dockage. You know, at least the boats were here. The dockage was here. There was some sort of income as opposed to some of the small businesses where they completely closed up. And, you know, I talked to a lot of people with small businesses, the smaller businesses that support the marina, uh, the, the boat yards and marinas, and they said they still had business, but, you know, they were down by, say, 30, 40, 50 percent, but they were still managing, and they were just taking measures to try to be able to get through this process with the idea that we all felt this is going to pass. You know, we're going to be okay. We're going to hold on. And for those people who are really struggling, let's try to support them and do whatever we can. And so that's, that's kind of what I've seen. I've also seen a lot of activity. I mean, I'm, I'm getting a lot of activity, a lot of inquiries uh, for, uh, for properties. For yeah, I've been hearing that a lot from the real estate side and that there's just not enough inventory. My sister is a title agent and she hasn't stopped. Mm -hmm. I, mean, so, I mean, like people are refined because of the financial situation. If people were fortunate enough to keep their jobs, that a lot of people are using this time to refinance their, their, their individual properties, their commercial properties, et cetera. Um, so no, that's really good. That's really good to hear. And, and then from your, you don't just still here in South Florida though, Julie, I mean, are you hearing anything from any other areas or, I mean, all this is primarily your, your center of focus. Well, I do deal in some other areas, you know, I've done some things in, you know, the West coast and, you know, up on the East coast, but, uh, for the most part, you know, I see people coming out of the area, not, not local just to South Florida, but coming out of the area, wanting to get into South Florida. It seems to be one of the hottest areas to get into. And, That's great. That's yep. great news. Yeah. And they, there are other areas they want to go to as well. They're very strategic in what they're looking at. But mm -hmm. it just seems like this is a hot area and this is where they want to be. So. That's great. Now, if somebody wanted to find Harry, <coughs> so when you do an introduction, let's say your name, your company, who you're with, and how to find you. So Okay. So my name is... I think I know almost everybody here, almost. Um, Julie Berry, you'll see me as Julie Fisher Berry. I've got my maiden name stuck in there to, because if you pull up Julie Berry, it pulls up the girl from Survivor. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she's got a, she's way better built well, than we're I. all Survivors here, so we're still here, so it's a good <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> And um, <laughs> my group is called Marine Investments Group. I'm under the umbrella of Styles Realty, I'm located on Las Olas Boulevard. Um, I've been working in strictly, almost strictly, the marine sector for, I'd say, 10 or 11 years. Um, I started out with office, uh, corporate leasing and office investments, and then did the transition. And I'm very happy with the transition. I love what I do. And so I've 
completely focused on this and I deal mostly in higher end properties. I don't deal too much with the, the smaller marinas, the mom and pops, it's more of um, higher end type marina. So it's the, it's those types of clientele that you're seeing. You know what I'm talking about, Kate. <laughs> and um, the people that are coming in and they're wanting to spend uh, by, by the bigger operations. And, and uh, that's good because we want people, mostly what I focus on is making sure that any of these properties, no matter where they are, South Florida, Georgia, um, Maryland, wherever they are, that the working marine properties stay working marine properties. That's one of the focuses. And I work I'm working, I'm working. Yeah, we're, we've been um, also working with the Miami and the South, continuing here in the South Florida area. One of all the, our other clients that, that my personal company deals with is the Marine Council in Miami and doing a big study of the marina properties down there and seeing where are the areas that we can add, where are the things that we can improve between um, uh, whether it's facilities improvement, whether it's adding dockage, whether it's access, you know, accessibility, et cetera. So, I mean, keeping, keeping these areas relevant is really important. And Julie, you've been a, a massive trailblazer in that area. And I, 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 I dig that more than anything. So, but thank you so much. So Julie Berry, Styles Realty, and uh, Julie Berry, what? So. <laughs> Um, I'm going to go just to the other corner of the square since we're playing a match game here. I'm going to go up there to Jeremy Backman. Um, so you have to unmute yourself. Hi, Jeremy. This hey, how are you? First time, long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> <laughs> Very well done. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. I'm, uh, I'm up in New Jersey and have been here um, and fortunately, it's just the, the weather has just turned within the past like week and a half to be nice. Memorial Day was a bust, so uh, boating is open. I'm overlooking Barnegat Bay right now, and uh, boats are out, so it's really reassuring. What part, of New Jersey, what part of New Jersey are you in? All right, so um, I'm currently down in a town called Lavalette. Down by. Um, ge geographically challenged, where is Lavalette? South? Uh, the, the beach, uh, down on um, Central. Down where? like where, where Jersey Shore was taped, but in the better section. I know, <laughs> sorry, Mr. Yeti. Uh, but I'm usually in a town called Hoboken, New Jersey, which is right across the river from New York City. Yes. Given the opportunity, we escaped and came down to the beach to enjoy it down here. Now, Jeremy, that's great that you live in New Jersey, but you haven't said a thing about your company or what you do or any of those things. So how, exactly. How so I work for Chubb. Yeah. So I work for Chubb uh, Recreational Marine, Marine, and I lead sales. And uh, it has been an interesting time of year, and for our clients. Um, but the boating industry has, you know, it's, it's has its challenges, but we still see people buying. Um, but given to COVID, um, a lot of yacht clients who are based in Florida and have a, were planning to bring their yacht north, had some challenges there due to travel restrictions, being able to get down south um, to bring their yacht north. But we're seeing that happen. Um, can I, can I interrupt you for a quick second? Now, Chubb, now this is not, you guys are like this giant thing. You're like a giant Yeti. You're not just like the little agent that walks in the door, right? Because Chubb is like <coughs> Correct. We are the insurance carrier and we work sure. with uh, independent insurance agents and right. brokers to distribute our products as the uh, as their subject matter experts. Yep. And you're and you you don't just cover yachting though, right? Chubb covers a myriad of things. Uh, you just yachting, Chubb. As just a myself. I'm I, I'm only yachting. Okay. However, we're a strategic product line within Personal Risk Services, which is for successful individuals and families. So whether they have other assets. I like the way you say that, successful individual and families. That's and we cool. like to consider I mean, whether we you all have, like to be one of those. Whether you have a runabout or whether you have a mega yacht, to be able to be fortunate enough to be successful to own that luxury asset, we're here for you. 
That's wonderful. Like, and, um, and, none, so and none of these, these fires and all these other crazy things haven't created much issue for you guys? or We, we have not been immune to marina fires, yacht fires, sinkings and strandings. We have not at all. We encompass it all. So um, we're there to help our clients when, when bad things go bad and to make them whole again. So you guys are kind of like, you know, like lawyers and, and, you know, it's like that, what's the, what do you call 30 lawyers at the bottom of the ocean? It's like, what do you call 30 uh, insurance agents at the bottom of the ocean? A good start until you need. Uh, until, uh, right. You, you generally yeah. don't want us, right? I want to see you unless I, I need you. Unless you need us. But, you know, we're trying to help clients prevent loss as well with hurricane fallouts, preventative measures, helping them to move their boats and yachts north um, and by giving them some more time and some more resources. So if anybody needs any help with insurance and, and our other friends across the aisle insure marinas and boat yards and boat manufacturers. So we encompass the whole uh, marine segment. So you can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me at chubb.com. My, my email is Jeremy dot backman at chubb.com is that chubb with two b's or only one two b's chubb.com and very very last question the 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 hurricane season just started here in south florida on monday um that was the i know mrs yet mr s yeti i under hear you i i am right there with you and typically that was the the day that every, everybody had in the big boats had to be out of South Florida. It had to be above that, that, that mystery parallel uh, thing. And so now a lot of industries, a lot of agencies have delayed that for a little while. Has Chubb done the same or not? So we made this decision to delay that until 7-1 yes. for our a lot clients. Of, a lot of companies have done that and they've been able to uh, push that back, which is great now that Rhode Island has opened and a lot of the, we've had a lot of inquiries about the Chesapeake and a lot of people that have been moving further north. So it's good to know that uh, that that you guys have expanded that to July 1st and, and uh, thank you for that, which gives our guys a little bit more time, bit more time. Make, make arrangements to head north, although we already have our second name storm out there, goodness gracious. In the Gulf. Oof. I know. And I, I know was, that one doesn't look very good, does it? No, but not so much for our side, more for the West Coast. But um, but I was I was fortunate to spend some time on a boat, which never happens, shocking, um, on Sunday, and there were twenty seven yachts over eighty feet at Bahia Mar. At June, twenty seven yachts over eighty feet at Bahia Mar, and that was just one marina. So there's yeah. a boats down here and I, I know that a lot of boats are looking to head north right now so um, I, mean, I think it's really important that everybody make sure that they they check their coverages and talk to people like you so, so that's that's wonderful so thank Great. you so much for joining us and, thank you and supporting the U.S. Super Yacht Association um, do I don't more. know um, Russ all we have is Russ there Russ Russ are you Wanting to chat about who you are, or you just want to be the mystery Russ on the camera? And Russ is muted. So assume that Russ does not want to be known. Oh, he's having connection issues. So did uh, Julie, I mean, so did our vice chair. So um, how about Betty Bauman? Betty, are you having connection issues too? Betty's a dear friend of many years. That uh, Betty is the fishing guru in all things ladies, let's go fishing. Um, are you, are you uh, yes, to get on camera and chat or no? Yes, I'm trying to get my um, video on here a second, but um, great to hear you. Um, ladies, let's go fishing is moving along. Uh, we are changing our events for the summertime and hopefully, uh, there I am. There you are. Ah. Yes. Are you ready? Hi. Yeah, so um, love, people are pent up. They want to get outside, just just like in your industry. You know, boating is 
a way for people to social distance but still get out on the water and have something great to do so yeah we're moving and grooving we're doing some virtual events too and uh, always enjoy and support everything that you do um, we've got some gulf coast in the summer fort lauderdale in the summer we've got a couple events in the keys and we offer fishing so not only can you learn and practice, you can go fishing. And we had our virtual cooking class last week for Lazy Day style snapper. Oh, oh yeah, snapper's a big time conversation right now. I tell you what, but uh, um, being taken up by by the Congress, as a matter of fact. So uh, no, that's great. And and if anybody is looking for you, Betty, tell the Ms. Mr. S Yeti how to find Betty Bauman and Ladies Let's Go Fishing. Well, thanks, Kitty, and really appreciate everything you're doing. Um, our website is ladiesletsgofishing.com, and uh, I've been busier than ever since this all started in March. I mean, seven days a week. Well, good for you, and if you've never taken one of Betty's classes, I, I, I was in part of, I think, probably the first class that you ever did, and it was a lot of fun, and it's a great way to do it. And, uh, and you do so many wonderful things for the, for the fishing sector of our industry. We really appreciate all of your efforts, Betty. Thank you so much. Um, Thanks for hanging in there regardless. So you guys um, keep it going. We all have things to face. No, and my, and my very sweet chocolate man, Robert Bowden, who has so many different, his hands in so many different sectors that cross over to our industry because Robert is very involved also in the, uh, the equine industry and is a, quite a showman on a horse and also the aviation industry as well as a chocolatier. Um, so uh, I know I'm kind of giving your, I'm giving your intro. So Robert, please shut me up and please tell uh, yes, <laughs> well, Robert um, Bowden and your fabulous uh, chocolate. My name is Robert Bowden. I was with, I founded Viva Ray Chocolates about six years ago. Um, prior to that, I was a professional horse trainer. I sourced and found um, horses for high-end clients around the globe. We do import-export training. I compete as well. Um, I wanted to in what, out in what practice? It's English riding. Saddle seat, saddle seat driving, uh, saddlebreds, uh, Tennessee walking horses. Uh, we call it the gentleman horses. We're not. Uh, we're not about speed. We're about style. Uh, that's kind of our aesthetic. So for a lot of the families, the, the ladies, children, and, and gents ride. So I did that. Um, and I started the chocolate business because I wanted to kind of branch out. I've done horses all my life and I loved it. But I wanted to do something else that I hadn't got a chance to do. Um, and I started that about, yeah, six years ago. And my business kind of case stayed in the same clientele. Um, yachts, horses, planes. This is my sector, private estates. So yeah, we do, we provide chocolate for private chefs. We will do custom items for corporate gifting, whether it be thank you gifts for clients or um, events, if you're hosting events, we do those. We also uh, teach classes and provide um, based on what our clients ask for. So everything is custom. Uh, we do nothing uh, front facing to the public. It is very much made to order, so that's kind of our thing. And if for those of you that came to our pavilion last year at the show, um, you saw our fabulous little chocolates. I still have people, Robert, I still have people really? ask me about those chocolates that had our logo, the USSA logo, on them, and I hoarded them, and I, we ate them <laughs> after, that, after the yes. show, but they were fantastic. So, you're looking, Chubb, this would be a great giveaway to do something sweet for your people. They can put the Chubb logo on things and you can give it to your high-end customers. Um, and their delivery service is fantastic. And, and you know, the nationwide, yeah. it, when you're dealing with Robert and Viva Ray Chocolates is that you're not just dealing with like a faceless company. It's, it's a human, it's a person, and they, they really care about every part about their business. And, and he always puts the extra amount into every bit of it. And we're so pleased to have you as a friend and a partner. And I met Robert at the Newport Park show a couple of several years ago that, and uh, we, we just clicked instantly. And uh, now I hope that he'll be a friend for life. And the Newport Charter show is supposedly, and fingers crossed, is gonna have been 
uh, been pushed back to September to tie into the Newport International Boat Show. So we'll see about that. But, uh, but I hope to see uh, my, my good buddy Robert here in person, in the flesh, very, very soon. So that would be a lovely, lovely, lovely addition. And so, uh, Julie, this would be a great thing also, uh, Julie Berry, for, for you, some of your clients as well, for, you know, from a high-end side. I mean, their ganache little chocolates, oh my, like I said, I still have people that ask me about them. Say, hey, I just sent a note to Robert to send me his contact info. Well, I agree. Oh, that's great. No, because, and, and I tell you, and I am not a chocolate. My thing is like, you give me a slice of pizza, I'm all over it. And, but <laughs> chocolate, I am like, he sent us some chocolates a few months ago, right at the beginning of this whole crazy COVID thing. And I am like, we're, we've just finished them and we just like going, oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, the best chocolate ever. And you know, they, they source their products from a very good place and it's not, it's not stuff that you buy. I, yeah, I travel, I travel globally to purposely, I personally go pick, I meet with the farmers. Um, I work on the fine chocolate industry for the US. So I actually interact to make sure the supply chain is ethical. Um, environmentally sound so that because a lot of our clients are very particular and I want to make sure that what I'm getting them they can stand behind as well as enjoy. So, yeah. well, and we appreciate your support and you've always been there for us with the USSA so thank you so much for joining us again. Um, Diane Byrne I know our vice chair um, has had some connection issues, and I don't know if it's us or her, but I see her name up there. Are you able to chat? And I know that there was, oh, Russ is gone now. He was having a hard time connecting. Russ, Diane, are you able to chat at least? Yep, my audio is working. Can you hear me, hopefully? Yes, we can hear you. Huh. Yes. <laughs> I know my fellow redhead. We missed the red, but talk to us about what's happening uh, with, because you have a global pulse on what's going on, and tell us about well, the the latest. What I'm, it was just cutting out again. Sorry. What did you say, Kitty? No, I say yes. Tell Mr. S Yeti all of the things that's happening with MeggieAtNews.com. Oh my gosh, where do I start? <laughs> in like thirty seconds or less. <laughs> well, in in terms of anywhere you would like to cruise, right now the U.S. seems to be the easiest place to do so. Typically in the summertime, a lot of the yachts would go to the Med, but each country over there has got different regulations where they are in terms of reopening and there's also the restrictions. So it's, it's challenging to say the least over there. Everybody's hoping for the best, and obviously, if they wanted to do their summer season over there, but it's, it's just not looking like it's possible. So really the East Coast of the US is benefiting from the lack of uh, easy mobility over in the med. And I think the West Coast too, Kate, you might be able to comment on that unless you already did. The West Coast, I'm sure, is gonna see some nice activity as well. Yeah, the, the, I can just comment if anyone's interested, but the boats are anchored out like they do in the fall. There's not enough supply with marinas and availability. Hand is here, Lonian was here. On the hook in San Diego Bay, Bay like a 20 foot sailboat, it's fabulous. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, there's some good boats. I was looking at uh, AIS traffic. There's a good number of boats that are in the Northeast already, um, definitely up in Newport or heading that way. So I think it's going to be a banner year in terms of an easy elite season, season, cruising. For sure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope the summer stays good for, uh, for all involved. One of the things is that Alaska in the West Coast is open in, you know, in limited, in limited form. Um, and, and, but yet it's difficult. You can't get there except cruising through Canada and we still have a closure with that border. So, um, I, I know I've been in touch with the Anima May's, uh, representative through Canada to see how we can maybe open that up and, oh, you know, to me, the biggest push right now is to get people out on their boats and get, you know, get Maine open, get these other places open so that people can use their boats. So um, I know that there is a, a, a gonna, they're opening some of the places in, like in Mallorca is opening and some of the places in, in Europe are starting to open. Um, 
Yeah, they're so doing, they've got go case by case basis. Each country is doing different things. Um, right now, the only place you can go to readily without having to quarantine crew or guests is Croatia. So <laughs> the other countries, uh, France, for example, crew can arrive from foreign waters on the boat, but no guests can come on the boat. In terms of guests wanting to join a boat in the French waters, they have to already be within, I believe it's either 100 or 50 kilometers. I believe it's now at, out to 100 kilometers. So if you're beyond the 100 kilometer mark, and you also have to be within the, uh, the confines of the country as well, France itself. You can't come from, say, Italy or somewhere else. So um, that's a restriction that's in place at least through the middle of June and, and possibly a little bit later. Italy was just allowing international arrivals through their airport, but I don't know yet that yacht charter is going to be actually, um, or yacht cruising, if somebody has a private boat, if they want to arrive from international. I don't know how easy that's going to be. Those regulations are moving like a, a ping pong ball uh, every day. You know, every day, just like, just like they are here. It's like, okay, like let's it. take this baby step. Let's take that baby step. The, the people I'm in touch with over there who have their finger directly on the of everything in Europe there. I'm talking to them every other day and things keep changing for them. So I was actually trying to help them write some, uh, some guidance Sorry. because English is not their primary language. So they were asking for my input and they'd send me a document and three days later, okay, now we have to change it again because the government regulations changed again. So, you know. Let me ask you, Diane, um, from the standpoint of, of coming from foreign, you know, the U.S. still has a ban on foreign travel, and now they've ex expanded that to Brazil just recently. Is there, from in Europe, because I, I have kind of lost touch of that in the last week, um, are they allowing U.S. travel from, from, are they allowing tourists at all from U.S. or no? In term, the information I have is just in terms of yacht charter. So all I can tell you is that um, for yacht charter, no foreign nationals can yet enter France. Um, Spain should open up another couple of weeks. Italy, the last I know, their airport was actually going to start allowing international arrivals today. So we'll have to see how that goes. Um, so at this moment, the only country that's allowing anybody, not just Americans, would be um, Croatia. Well, I've never been, so I, I think we should all go. <laughs> yep, <Yeah, right. laughs> But I'm Jones and go somewhere. <laughs> Di, yeah, I was Di, scheduled I was... to be there this fall. That's why I was scheduled to be the summer. Because I know all the people on this call right now, because uh, I know a number of you, and I, we, we're going to come to Russ here in a second. I, I, I'm supposed to be in Australia right now, our chairman's home country, and I am going that, you know, crazy not having been able to go anywhere in in months and so i'm waiting for everything to open so um we have before i come down i'm going to let the closing comments to our chair uh kate pearson but we have someone on the call named russ and i don't know anything about you russ but uh but you i know had some challenges are you there are you able to unmute are we able to unmute him do you want to chat or no otherwise we've got nothing he's just a voyeur and uh, <laughs> and that's okay, as long as we're not seeing anything else of us. <laughs> Crazy stories about some of these Zoom calls that you see too many things that you don't want to see. But <laughs> um, on that, before I forget, um, uh, U.S. Super Yacht Association, I have a weekly call with Super Yacht Radio and superyetradio.com at 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And it's um, online, and they also will podcast it the following week. And I typically will bring guests on board with us and, uh, you know, and to talk about different sectors of the industry. And, um, hey, Ms. Ms. Berry, you want to join me tomorrow? I had somebody on the call, and they just bailed on me. Julie? Berry? What time, what, what time is it? Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Friday? Friday, 11. Let's chat later. We'll chat later. But what it is, it's just really just an opportunity. If you've never been on superyetradio.com, it's a really cool 
uh, site, and it's a it's a it's a couple that and do I mean Diane, you're really tight with them. I know you chat with them all the time. Um, it is an opportunity for us to talk about what's happening. The majority of their listenership is uh, European, so it's an opportunity okay. to share what's happening here in the United States over abroad and it's a it's a lot of fun it's very super casual it's not a presentation it's not a thing sometimes we just chat about the weather and what's happening here in florida which is really dreary here by the way yeah, <laughs> lots of dogs here but uh, i'm 90 99 percent sure i can do that kitty fantastic well good then i'll chat with you tomorrow i'll chat with you later and we'll, i already have your headshot and everything else we'll get it out on social but uh, with that, I know we're a little bit over seven. Um, I'd like to give closing thoughts before I say anything else. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, we love you all and thank you for your support. And all of this can be found at ussuperyacht.com and closing comments by our wonderful chairwoman and very dear woman, uh, Kate Pearson, Safe Harbor Marinas. Take it away, Kate. Yeah, I mean, all I can tell you guys is good news. Um, the smaller recreational boat market is on fire. No puns intended, Jeremy, in a good way. Um, that you know, I was talking to some people today who are putting in an order for 15 new boats to be delivered. Um, I'm hearing that people who are not traditionally boater families are looking at boating really hard. Um, I'm pleased to say that the industry is doing a great job socially distancing while showing boats. Um, and, and this is the kind of ripple effect that is really important to this, the large boat business in years to come. So we're creating a new fresh pipeline of people who are getting into boating. Um, that's, it's just really positive. So, you know, if there's something that makes you feel good, it's getting out on the water. It doesn't matter if you're on stand up water or a super yacht, but Really, you feel better on a super yacht. Uh, and but but nothing feels better than being in the sun and being out with friends and family. And it doesn't matter whether you're 12 or 90, being in the sun. And all I have to say, and I'm going to, sorry, I'm, I'm, I know I'm interfering. Sorry, Kate, I said you were going to word, but I digress. I never said thank you to our Mr. S. Yeti, who, I'm sorry, you definitely need a little vitamin D. You're starting to look... So I think that they say the sun helps keep you from getting COVID. I want to thank you for coming out today and letting our friends talk to you about what they do for their business. And you're such a wonderful supporter of everything that we do with USSA and, and our pavilion at, uh, at FLIBS and, and our stuff. So I just want to say thank you. And of course, our sponsor at Crown Wine and Spirits. Uh, where you can find all of these things that you needed for your, not for the, uh, for the meatballs, but for the jam, cocktail, and, uh, but with Safe Harbor Marinas, what you guys are doing around the country is, is just, is just magical, and bringing, bringing some places that were dying back to life, and, um, we're spending a lot of good money and reinvesting in inf infrastructure and we're delighted to do it. Um, you know, we, we need to set boating up and boaters up for the next you know, hundred years. So it's good. Doing. Well, thank you. And, and Safe Harbor Marina has been a wonderful sponsor of, of our presentation today as well, in addition to Crown One and Spirits. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at, a, at another event very soon next Thursday for our educational series. On in with our wonderful board member Julie Perry, Julie Perry, not Julie Perry, Julie Perry from Boardable about LinkedIn. And meanwhile, you can join us all, or please spread the word about the importance of supporting the U.S. Super Yacht Association. You can find all the information about joining or about all the good things that we're doing on your behalf and on behalf of the industry at ussuperyacht.com. Thank you so much. Please stay safe. Please be kind and let's each other and have a great evening. Thank you so much. Thanks.